It's a beautiful morning here in Samal Island. Our few days here, so far, are going great. In fact, it turned out even better than we thought. In the last episode, we made our way from Luzon to the Davao region. Many of you may be wondering why we chose to live here. It has beautiful nature, lots of fruits, and no typhoon season unlike some parts of the Philippines. We have also heard that many Russians live here. Maybe we would meet someone and feel more at ease. We stayed in Babak District, one of the three districts in Samal Island. The other two are Peña Plata and Kapotian. Like the other small islands in the Philippines, tricycle are the main mode of transportation here. They are found everywhere, but most often near the market or town squares. Local tricycles have rear passenger seats and can accommodate up to five passengers. This is very interesting, even to me. I've never seen tricycles like this in my province. Most of them are painted in bright yellow. The color is different in each district. Tricycles from Samal Island are forbidden to go on the mainland. There are also motorcycles or habal-habal. They can be rented along with a driver for the day. Even it's scorching hot outside, the drivers patiently wait for passengers with a smile on their faces. We decided to walk along the aisle of the local market. Among the pencils and school supplies, Borya noticed wooden slingshots and colorful harnesses. As a child, he never imagined he could buy a slingshot at the market. The boys carved slingshots and hid their weapons away from the adults. Indeed, the Philippines is another planet. The market has meat department that sells pork, beef, and chicken. But still the main product here is seafood. Eyes are diverted by the different kinds of tropical fish, squid, shrimps, and shells. We bought the milkfish and went on our way. We need to buy potatoes for mom. It's like rice for her and love to eat it with fish or meat. I often don't understand the locals because I don't speak Bisaya. Sometimes I say, I'm sorry, in Tagalog please. I feel like a foreigner in my own country. Bisaya or Cebuano is spoken in the central Philippines on the Visayan islands of Cebu, Bohol, Siquijor, Negros, and in the south in most of the island of Mindanao. Today, most Filipinos know Tagalog. Filipino or standardized variety of Tagalog is the national language of the Philippines and is taught in school. Therefore, I speak to the locals in Tagalog or English. There is always a lot of dried fish in the Philippine market. Filipinos love it. Here, dried fish is always fried in coconut oil or palm oil. I was very surprised when Borya suggested I try uncooked smoked fish when we were in Armenia. Here, even smoked fish is fried before you eat it. Rice in the Philippines is the mainstay of the table, so there are many varieties. Husband noticed a store that sells eggs. He was amazed. Eggs here are laid without a refrigerator. He told maybe these chicks are from the egg store too, since it's so hot outside. Looking at these cute chicks already makes me dream of taking them and build a chicken farm.
It's interesting to watch the Filipinos at work and their businesses. These men repair motorcycles on the side of the street and look so happy. We were lucky enough to see Filipinos making spring roll wrappers. They are used to make the Torone Numpiang Shanghai that I've talked about in my previous videos. But what we saw next is even more interesting. The Filipinos roast the big whole pig. This dish is called the chon. And the master who makes it is a lechonero. Lechon is one of the most popular dishes in the Philippines. It is usually stuffed with lemongrass, tamarind, garlic, and onions, and is slowly baked over an open fire on a large bamboo or metal spit. Cooking lechon is a tedious process where the spit is spun by hand as it takes an average of 6 to 8 hours to cook, depending on the size of the pig. Philippine lechon is known for its skin. The perfect skin is cooked evenly and remains smooth and shiny. Beautiful aromas are wafted all over the place. Unfortunately, we haven't had a chance to try this incredible Filipino dish yet. Even I have never tried it in my life. For lunch, we have grilled milk fish, vegetable stew, mango salad, and some coconut pulp. Shortly after we moved in this apartment, we got some uninvited guests. A horde of brazen tropical ants. We bought an insect repellent in crayon form, and Boryu started drawing borders and mazes in their path. We woke up to this cute little bird pecking at our window. She was probably eating yesterday's ants. We opened the window and the bird greeted us with a good morning with its beautiful melody. Amazing! This wild bird always sings the same nine note melody, which it sings in the same order and rhythm. What music school did she go to? Husband and I decided to go to the beach to buy fish. But the fishermen didn't go out to sea last night. One man saw me collecting small shells and brought in a huge conch seashell. His name is Osman. He is a local fisherman. It's for us, really? Yeah, he gave Yeah, thank you so much. Oh. Very beautiful. This one, Taklobo. Taklobo. Ah. This Taklobo. one, Ujong. Ah. Osman also gave us a shell of another large clam. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful. Nice to meet you. Yeah. 
We are very happy to have such wonderful gifts and that we are making friends. She's beautiful now. Дарлин приготовила завтрак, салат, рис, манго и яичница с помидорами. After breakfast, he climbed into Puyaben's car. He offered to drive with him to their farm. <laughs> The road isn't smooth, and we bounce around on the bumps. But the view on the sides are spectacular. So many plants, and different tropical trees. <laughs> After about half an hour, we got to the farm. It's quiet and peaceful here. It was our family's dream to live in a place like this, surrounded by greenery. This banana farm? Yes, yeah. banana. Ah. And uh, here's different banana or like same? Uh, different. Different. Mm -hmm. There is snakes. Snake? Snake. Yeah, have you know, there, but there. The... Uh, no, no, snake. Because it's clean. Ah. That's my uh, caretaker. Caretaker. Uh. <laughs> Kuyaben's caretaker climb a palm tree for coconuts. He makes it look so easy. Ben pick some cassava. Here, the tubers are often used to make various desserts. Not many people know that the tops of the cassava are also edible. The best way to cook it is with coconut milk. He also showed us around his mango farm. 
At this time of year, these mango varieties have no fruit yet. Mango is the third most important fruit crop in the Philippines. After banana and pineapple. Mango is the Philippine national fruit. Filipinos love to eat it fresh, add it to ice cream, pastries, and other delicacies. Three varieties of mangoes are well known in the Philippines. Carabao, Pico, and Indian Mango. But only Carabao is grown for export. We ended this beautiful day with pancit, which I made. There is a belief that if you eat pancit, life will be longer. This is very good for us. It means we can spend more time together in this beautiful country. In the next episode, И когда я хотел расплатиться, мне сказали, что после после еды. А сколько платить? Потому что нет ни ценников, ни меню. Но некоторые конусы способны убить человека за пять минут. А Дарлин вон берет его в руки, говорит, что ты так боишься?